Greetings everyone, this is non-expert here back again with another video. Today, or rather not only today, but uh, throughout the month, we will be doing something a little different. So previously, as you know, we were going through a daily coding problem mailing list, but I thought we would switch things up a little bit. Um, recently, I stumbled upon a lead code initiative, which, which they sort of started to tackle the uh, COVID-19. Um, just to keep people on track and keep people busy. Um, and what Lead Code is doing is, is that every single day on midnight, they are planning to release a problem statement, um, which you can solve. Uh, the beauty of this entire thing is that they're gonna start with something simple and then they're gonna build out of that. So my assumption is by uh, week five, you're gonna be probably doing problems which are gonna be high difficulty of hard, according to lead code standards. Um, and I just thought that I would sort of do this thing and try to publish a video every single day for you guys so that uh, we can collectively as a group try to solve problems and then discuss how we sort of went about the problem. And I just thought it would be a fun in initiative and we would just switch things up a little bit. Cool, so um, presently as of today, which is April 2nd, we are presently at the second day of our entire lead code 30-day lead code challenge. Um, so you already can see that I've solved the first problem, which is a single number problem. Go ahead and try to solve it on your own. Um, it's pretty simple, but today we are gonna to be solving the happy number problem. Um, full disclosure, I have not gone through these problems. Like, I mean, not to my knowledge, I've not solved these problems ever, but uh, what we'll try to do is we'll try to collectively think about this thing as an interview practice and see if somebody's given us a problem in an interview and try to try to solve it from there on forward. Awesome, so uh, the name of the problem is happy number and the problem description is that we need to write an algorithm to determine if a number is happy. And a happy number is a number defined by the following processes. So starting with any positive integer, we need to replace the number by the sum of the square of its digits. Um, and repeat the process until the number equals one, where it will stay. Or it will loop endlessly in a cycle which does not include one. So those numbers for which this process ends in one are happy numbers. And we've been given an example over here, which is um, 19. And the output over here is true. And the explanation that they've given is that if you take 19, um, and you take the digits, which is one and nine, and you square them up and then sum them up, uh, which is one square plus nine square, you will get 82. And you keep on doing this over and over again till you either hit one or you hit a loop. Um, and my understanding of a loop would probably be that, uh, I may be wrong here, but my understanding would be that if you've encountered a number, let's say you've encountered 82 before, um, you're basically in a loop. You're gonna go through the same process over and over again. Um, yeah, so over here, again, with the explanation they've given is that you go from one square plus nine square, which is 82, then eight square plus two square, which is 68, uh, six square plus eight square, which is 100, and one square plus zero square plus zero square, where 100 is like digits of one, zero, zero. So you square all them up and then you get one. So basically that would be a happy number. Cool. Um, so we can we can actually try to solve this problem in a variety of ways, like now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but since I didn't see any memory restrictions, I think for understanding whether there's a loop, I would probably place in a set or a dictionary or a hash map, whatever you want to call it, uh, which can determine whether something has been seen before or not. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and by the looks of it, since we don't know how many iterations we're going to run, a for loop would not really make sense because we don't know till when we want to run it. And that's why we would probably want to use a while loop. Um, but again, we usually start off with our base condition. So let's do that. So we just say, hey, if uh, n is none or zero, we would probably return false because zero square is zero and it's not one. Um, yeah, and if n is equal to one, then we return true. Awesome. Um, I would also like to define a function I'm going to call a square sum, sq sum, uh, which is basically going to take in a number and it's going to split it up into 
well, it's going to split up the digits and then square all those digits and then move from there. Um, you can do it by doing modulo and then divide, like, you know, di like divide all those things, uh, put a division on it and then move forward from there. I'm not going to like worry about those things because there are no space constrictions. So what I'm thinking is that since x is going to be an int, um, I can probably just convert it to a string. And if I just do str of x, that is, that, that's basically going to split it out for me. And then I can just do the iteration from there. So basically what I'm talking about is that you can have a sum which has, which is a function inside um, Python and you can do a list comprehension for each element, which is for each digit rather inside your X. Um, and then, you know, I trade from there. Also, EL is going to be a string over here, so I need to make sure that I take care of that. So let's do that, and I'm going to square this up. So this square and sum should basically work fine. Um, let me just quickly go ahead and check this thing, whether it's working fine or not. So assuming that n is 19, uh, which is the custom test case, um, this should return 82. Yeah, it should return 82, or at least print 82. So we have over here so at least for now this thing seems to be working fine and let's just go ahead with talking about the while loop constraints so the while loop constraints would be well you need to keep on looping over till n is equal to one well, well till n is not equal to one and you break off and n is equal to one so um, let's just do that let's just say while well, n is not equal to one and also uh, we need to take care of the loops so to do that, we need to define a variable. I'm just going to call this div, which is going to be a set. And um, all we need to do is we need to check whether n is invisited or not. So the very first thing that I would probably want to do is I just want to add n to the visited set so that this loop condition can be taken care of. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to like update the value of n with this square sum function. So let's just quickly do that. Let's do let's do sum n, and that should basically work. And this thing should loop until either of these conditions sort of, you know, becomes false. And when that happens, you would want to check whether n is equal to one. If it's equal to one, well, you know for a fact that you hit a hit a happy number. And the reason why you broke out of the loop was because n is equal to one and not because of a loop. Um, yeah. Uh, let's just go ahead and run this code. Hopefully this should run fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and submit this. And awesome, um, seems to be an accepted solution. And that's that's great. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, like we always think about how you would optimize the problem more and more. And whenever you have stuff like, and this is just like my intuition behind stuff, but whenever you have a, have a question which is like, hey, there's gonna be a loop inside of this thing. Um, that might be a place where you want to break off. Uh, what you might think about is um, using a Floyd Floyd detection or cycle detection technique. I'm not really sure what the full name is, uh, but basically the idea behind it is that you have a slow pointer and a fast pointer, and you keep on looping through the values. Uh, the advantage of that problem is that you would not need visited. Um, so let's just go ahead and try to solve that as well. So let's have a slow pointer, which is just going to be n for the beginning state, and a fast pointer, which is going to be the square sum, which is going to be n. And what we want to do is we want to iterate again um, till you know there's a loop which is encountered. So if slow is equal equal to fast, that would mean that there's a loop, or basically your slow has caught up to fast, or fast has sort of looped around and then caught back to slow. Um, so you can think of it as a cycle which sort of goes back. So you would want to do while slow is um, not equal to fast and fast would probably be not equal to one either. Um, and the condition sort of changes for the return. We would want to check whether fast is equal equal to one. And now all we want to do is we just want to update the slow value with itself um, with a square sum. Um, I forgot to put a self here. Let's quickly copy paste this. Um, pass in slow and also update fast which can take in the fast parameter but also do it twice so it skips over it it goes twice as fast as how the slow would go um, 
and I know I'm not doing a really good job of explaining this thing, but overall the idea behind this thing is that, let me just put it in comments, and I'm not really sure whether this would work or not, but let's just go about it, right? So if you have A, which points to B, which points to C, which points to uh, D, which um, basically points back over here to this guy, um, so let's just demonstrate that, like this. So D goes back to B. Um, in this sense, you would basically not get a one ever. And the way you're deducing that there's gonna be a cycle over here is by maintaining a fast and a slow pointer. So we can do fast and slow. We can just write it over here. Let's write slow and let's write fast. Slow is gonna be A. Um, and fast is probably gonna be B over here. So it's gonna go twice as fast. So when slow is, um, when slow goes to the next value, which is B, which is over here, uh, fast is going to get updated twice. So it's going to be, well, D. Um, and when slow is going to get updated to C, which is the next iteration, D is going to be updated to the next of the next, which is also C. And that's how you would deduce that there's a cycle over here. And well, that's where you break it off. Uh, so in that case, it's not a happy number. Uh, and if fast is equal equal to one, if it sort of conforms to a value which we wanted to conform to, we can say, hey, this value sort of makes sense. Well, that's when you would probably want to break things off and just go from there. So let's just run this code. Um, well, it seems to be working fine. Let's just go ahead and submit this. And awesome, it seems to be working fine. Um, so that's basically it for today's video. Um, two approaches to solving a problem, one, um, I would feel like one is not that memory efficient and one is, uh, but speed wise, one of them, the first one would probably be better. Um, but that's basically it. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you have any comments or if you have any suggestions or if you didn't understand something, do leave it in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you did subscribe to this channel, you're awesome. We all know it and have an awesome day. Thank you.